Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and we are working more on graphing relations today. Uh, our goal, I can draw a line of best fit through data using a graphing calculator. So you're going to need one of the school's graphing calculators to do this lesson. Um, you can follow along with it if you don't have a calculator, but you'll get much more out of it if you follow the steps as you go along, pressing pause when I'm giving you information and entering information into your graphing calculator. Uh, hopefully I'll be around while you're doing this to give you uh, a little bit of extra help with the calculator if you need it. Um, so if you haven't picked a calculator up already, go and get a calculator. So we're going to do this by example. Uh, and example number one says using a graphing calculator to plot the points in the following chart and use it to answer the given questions. So let's have a look at what we're being asked to graph. Uh, we have some uh, relationship here. It says ice cream sales versus temperature. So we want to see if the ice cream sales um, are affected by the temperature outside. So when we look at this information we see that it's all kind of scattered. This is they've recorded information from different days and said okay our temperature was 14.2 Celsius today and we sold 215 ice cream. Uh, but as you can see later there's a temperature of 11.9 so this is not arranged in any kind of order so it's really kind of hard um, to get any kind of information out of what's written here. So we would be best to organize it um, either in another chart and put it in uh, numeric order by either ice cream sales or by temperature um, or we can organize it by graph and what we're going to do is organize it by graph uh, to answer these questions. Does there appear to be a relationship between the temperature and ice cream sales? If so, describe it. Okay. Well, we can't really describe a relationship until we have our graph down there. So I'm going to pull up my graphing calculator. which looks like this and your graphing calculator that you're going to have will look exactly like this as well. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is split the screen so that we have whoop, have this information here. Now you have this information as well and this is all the information you need to use um, the line of best fit or to find a line of best fit on the calculator. You just have to look to see where stuff is. So I'm just going to highlight the headlines here and you might want to do that too. So these buttons right here are the ones you press to clear the memory on your calculator. Now the reason we clear the memory on the calculator is because you don't know who else has been using it and there are so many different places to store information on this calculator um, that there could be hidden information that's going to wreck your data. So you want to make sure you clear the memory. Um, then there are these things uh, up at the top tell us what that first row, this one here, what tells us what that first row does. Um, there's four buttons there that we need to know about, the y equals, the window, the zoom, and the graph. And what I have here is the window screen that happens when you press those buttons. Now this says to turn the scatter plot settings on and to adjust your plot. Those are information that you need to know. And to adjust your window, you need to know how to do this kind of stuff. Okay, This is all adjusting your window. Now over here, this is talking about entering your scatter plot points. And then lastly, making a line of best fit and putting your line on the graph. So you need to look at these things um, on this sheet to get information about each of these. So take a look at the headline. might help to, to highlight your headline. Take a look at your headline and see where you want. And now you can see that I have buttons to press and stuff over here. So we're going to pull up my graphing calculator again. And I'm going to put it kind of right in the middle so I can point to this and I can point to this. So the first thing I told you to do was clear your memory. Um, by the looks of it, mine is already cleared because that's what this means when it says RAM cleared. Uh, it means that the memory has been cleared. However, I am going to clear it again just so you can see the steps involved. So we press the second button, this yellow button here, and then the plus key down here. And then number seven is reset, so we press seven. 
and we want to reset all the RAM so we press 1 and then this is just asking us are you sure because if you reset it you lose everything and you either press 1 if you were doing it by accident or we really do want to reset it so we're going to press 2 and then it comes up with this message again RAM cleared. Now you can get rid of that message by just pressing the clear button and then this portion of the calculator actually just works like any normal calculator. You go 5 times 5 is 25 and anything like that and you can put multiple things on the screen Okay, and you can clear that. What we want to do is enter this list of data points and so I'm going to point over here to show you where we find that information how to enter that list. So here it says enter your scatter plot points. So this tells us how to enter our scatter plot points. It tells us what buttons. So here's the button we want. It has stat on it. So here it is right here. So I'm going to press stat and then it tells us we want to press 1 to take us into this table. And there we go. We've got that table. Now this says put independent or horizontal variable in an L1 and dependent in L2. Now what we want to do here is see if ice cream sales depend on temperature. That means that our ice cream sales are our dependent variable because they were depend on temperature and our temperature is the independent variable because temperature sales don't depend on or temperature settings don't depend on ice cream. Okay. So this is the stuff that we know that we measure um, that is set and this is the stuff that we either calculate or we measure or we figure out. Okay. So now we're going to enter all of this information into list 1. So this is already on list 1 so I'm going to go 14.2 and press enter and then 16.4. Whoop. Now I screwed up there. Now you can just hit delete and it to, or hit backspace and it clears the whole thing or you can hit clear and it clears the whole thing. Um, 16.4 enter 11.9 enter. Now when I get to the end of this list I'm going to press this button to go over and then I'm going to put in the corresponding things 215 enter 325 enter 332 enter and you always have to make sure that things are side by side so if you take a look here this 11.9 over here should have had 185 beside it and since it does not have 185 beside it I can go up and this 332 is for the next one so I can insert I go second delete and it inserts another thing beside there. So I don't have to erase this one. I can just insert another one and put in my 185 there and then keep going. So you don't have to retype everything over and over again if you, if you get through the whole list and you've missed something. So now I'm going to pause the video and finish entering this information for my calculator. So there, I've got all of my information in here. Now notice that I have the same number in both. If you end up uh, at the end and you have a number over here but not in here or vice versa, you've missed something and the calculator is not going to like that mistake. You need to have the same number in each list. So now we're going to follow our information over here. This says we've entered our scatter plots. Now we have to turn the scatter plot on because if I just press graph right now, there's nothing there. We have to tell the calculator to plot those points. So to turn the scatter plots on, we go second y equals. Those are their buttons. Second y equals. And then when we press number one, we're going to adjust, adjust plot one. And we can press um, enter again to turn the plot on. So now on is highlighted, not off. Everything else can actually stay the same though. Um, this tells the calculator I want it to, to put dots in. And this tells the calculator where our X's and our Y's are, um, which is how we put it in there. And the mark, you can change what mark you want if you and by these by scrolling down with the with the cursor buttons here. Um, you can change the mark to a little cross if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Okay. The important thing is now our settings on. So we press graph again 
and we still don't see anything. Okay. Now what that actually means is we have to adjust our window. The default window setting, if you press window up here, the default window setting goes from negative 10 to 10 and from negative 10 to 10 on the X scale and the Y scale. So that's the default. Negative 10's over here, positive 10's over here, negative 10's down here, positive 10's up here. Now that just won't work when we're graphing temperatures that go from uh, 10 degrees Celsius uh, up to 17 degrees Celsius because they start at they start at 10 or they start at 9 or sorry 11.9 and our ice cream scales are even sales are even worse for fitting on the thing our ice cream sales are way off the charts so we have to adjust these things by taking a look um, x min is we need to set that to the small just slightly smaller than your smallest independent variable so here's our x list what was our smallest one there was 11.9 so I'm gonna set that the smallest to 10 now X max stands for maximum what's the maximum X value so that's the biggest X value we have here the biggest X value we have here is 25 so I'm gonna set this to about 26 and then we go to the Y min the Y min the smallest y value, if we take a look at there, the smallest y value looks to be 185. So a negative 10 definitely won't cut it. So I'm going to put it to 150 just so I can see it. And the biggest y value, if we take a look here and we're trying to find the biggest y value, we've got 522 I think looks good. Oh, 544. Let's go to 550. Now when I press graph, I have a bunch of dots. Now this says, now let's take a look at the questions we're being asked. It says, does there appear to be a relationship between the temperature and the ice cream sales? If so, describe it. Well, it certainly does. This looks like a linear relationship going up. So how would I describe that? I would say the hotter the temperature, the higher the temperature, the greater The sales. So if there's a relationship we say that the two values have a correlation so yes ice cream sales and temperature are correlated. If both values are increasing it has a positive correlation. If one value increases while the other increases it is said to have a negative correlation. Is this positive or negative correlation? Well let's take a look at our graph again. Um, temperature goes up this way sales go up this way so as our temperatures go up our sales are going up so this thing is a positive correlation because they are both going up now if um, when we look at it from left to right if this stuff was coming down this way then we would say it was a negative correlation okay use the graphing calculator to find the line of best fit for the data so here's how we do that this one's pretty straightforward. Look over here, make a line of best fit. So we're going to press stat and then we're going to press the cursor key over to calculate. And then this tells us we want to choose four, which says line reg. And then we press enter. And there is the equation of our line of best fit. Now we want to put it on the graph. So we're going to follow this set of instructions. To put it on the graph, we press Y equals, and it brings us to here. This is where we plot lines, and we're going to be using this a little bit. Um, then we press VARS, which is right here. And then 5. And then we have to go over to EQ. Tells us that press over over twice so we get to EQ and then we want to press 1 because I want the regression equation that's what it's called that I just got there and it puts it all in and now we just need to press graph and it puts that line on our graph okay now the last thing it asks us to do here it says using the graphing calculator how many ice cream sales would you expect if the temperature reached 30 so we need to go to 30 on the temperature setting. Now 
be a little bit careful with this because if we look at our plot, I'm going to go back into window. If we look at our window, uh, we did not go up to a maximum of 30 on the X. So what we need to do is change that again to 30 and I'm even going to go further than that. I'm going to go 35. And if that's 35, this needs to go up a little bit too. So I'm going to go put that up to 650. And when we graph it again, uh, we need to see when our X is 30. And that's way, way over here. So we don't even have that information on there now. So I'm going to press window again. And I'm going to have this sales go up to 1,000 and see if we can get that information from here now. Okay, now it's a little bit of guesswork when I'm trying to figure that out. So now I'm going to go where X is 30. Now we can press trace. When we press trace, this thing is either going to hop around from point to point, which it is now. Okay, so when I press over, it's hopping around from point to point. Or if I press the up or down, it switches so now it's on the line. And I need to go over on the line until my X reads very close to 30. There we go. That's the closest we can get to 30. So 30.2 sales looks like about $750 for ice cream sales. Okay. Now this is called extrapolation because I'm going outside my graphed data to figure out how much ice cream sales I was going to have. Now I can also go inside the data, it's called interpolation. How much would I expect if the ice if the temperature was 20? So I'm going to take a look at this. And again, if you press trace, you don't want to jump around on the points. So press either up or down to go onto the line. And now we're going to go until my X reads 20 because X was temperature. So I'm going to go try and find 20, up oh, 19.8, 20.1, right there. So about $445, okay, because our Y is sales and our X is temperature. So we make the X say 20, and then we take a look at the Y, which is 445. So I'm going to say about $450, because we're just basically taking a guess. Okay, so that is actually using the graphing calculator to find that kind of information. Now, you're going to have some homework questions here. Practice questions, you may have already done these by hand. I want you to do them again by the calculator. And for question number nine, I believe it is, um, you're going to need this Men's World Speed Skating Championship. This is the information you're going to enter. You're going to enter the year um, in your X value and the time in your Y value or on the graphing calculator that's going to be list one and list two. So this video has gone a little bit long but when you introduce technology something like that occasionally happens but we are done.